But Adventists, I have good news for you. All of this is only a nightmare fan fiction written by a woman and her secretaries in the 19th century. It is not real. No one is coming for you. Most people haven't a clue who you guys are. And even less than that, even care that you worship on Saturday. There's not going to be a Sunday worship mandate law. What's up, YouTube? As always, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to get into some pretty crazy territory. If you are a Christian, you need to understand this about Seventh-day Adventism. As per usual, we are going to go to a number of their own sources. But before doing that, I want to play a small stint of a speech that the president of the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church, Ted Wilson, was giving to the leadership of the SDA Church back in 2021. And I want you to pay close attention to what he says. Adventists, I want you to pay close attention to what he says too. Then we're gonna get into some of the primary sources that he mentions in this talk. And Christians, I'm going to show you. This is what this church believes God has told them about you. So with that said, let's get right into it. Number two, the attempts to diminish the spirit of prophecy. Now, Ellen White predicted that there would be attempts to destroy God's work through her. In Testimonies to Ministers, page 51, she states, The result of such work will be unbelief in the testimonies, and as far as possible, they will make of none effect the work that I have for years been doing. People do this by ignoring the spirit of prophecy, challenging the spirit of prophecy, or actually contradicting the spirit of prophecy. You see, the spirit of prophecy, in my opinion, was given by God through Ellen White as special instructions to God's last day church and is verified by Revelation 12, 17 and Revelation 19, verse 10. The spirit of prophecy is absolutely reliable and is to be believed and accepted in its entirety. Ellen White was absolutely a prophet of God, and her ministry, including strong messages from the throne room of God about apocalyptic prophecy and instruction, are for all time. As we read the spirit of prophecy, we're convicted of its accuracy, its truthfulness, its relevancy. My dear friends, make no apologies for using or promoting the spirit of prophecy and its heavenly counsel. It is a heaven-sent gift of God to the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to the world. I firmly believe Ellen White was inspired by God. The spirit of prophecy is according to his word. All right, so notice what he said. Ellen White was a prophet. Her writings are completely reliable, truthful and accurate, and they're to be believed in their entirety, including her strong messages from the throne room of God about the apocalyptic prophecies and instruction, their heavenly counsel and a heaven sent gift from God. So Christians, we're going to look at these completely reliable, strong messages on apocalyptic matters as it pertains to you. The Seventh-day Adventist Church thinks that you're an apostate who has been deceived by Satan, that your prayers are an abomination to God. And not just that, but that one day in the very soon future, your church is going to link arms with the Roman papacy, or vice versa if you're a Roman Catholic, and together with the United States government will enact a Sunday worship mandate and eventually be given state sanction to hunt down and kill Seventh-day Adventists. Yes, I'm talking to you, you non-denominational heathen. Yes, you, you Roman Catholic lover of the triune God. This church actually teaches that people like you and I, especially people like me, former Seventh-day Adventists, are going to be used as stooges of the devil 
to one day hunt down and kill these people because they won't submit to the American government's papal demand to worship on Sunday. And they supposedly have God's word on it because Ellen said it. So. I want to look at a number of these heaven-sent strong messages about the apocalypse that our friend Ted mentioned because these are what he's referring to. So with that said, let's look at the first quote. All right, so I'm here in Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 451, and it says, By the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God, our nation will disconnect herself fully from righteousness. When Protestantism shall stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when, under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government, and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is is near. So supposedly, Protestant churches, the Catholic Church, and spiritualism in general are going to link arms, repudiate the Constitution, and form a union with the United States government to propagate Roman Catholic doctrine nationally. What papal doctrine are we all going to be fighting to make sure the government enforces, you might ask? So she says here in chapter nine of last day events, which is specifically on Sunday laws, that this law that we're all gonna be rallying around and enforcing is going to be a Sunday worship mandate. So she says, laws enforcing the observance of Sunday as the Sabbath will bring about a national apostasy from the principles of republicanism upon which the government has been founded. The religion of the papacy will be accepted by the rulers and the law of God will be made void. So the supposed papal doctrine that's going to be rallied around is going to be a national Sunday law. We're supposedly going to mandate that everyone has to worship on Sundays. Christians, you have to understand that for the Seventh-day Adventists, this is the mark of the beast. They think that when this law comes down, a line is going to be made in the sand and you're going to have to make a choice at that point. Are you going to stand with the papal false antichrist Sabbath of Sunday or are you going to stand with the remnant, the true worshipers and followers of God and worship on the Seventh-day Sabbath? And just a little bit further down the page here, she continues and she says, to secure popularity and patronage, legislators will yield to the demand for a Sunday law by the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God. Our nation will disconnect herself fully from righteousness. We must take a firm stand that we will not reverence the first day of the week as the Sabbath, for it is not the day that was blessed and sanctified by Jehovah. And in reverencing Sunday, we should place ourselves on the side of the great deceiver. So again, worshiping the triune God on Sundays means you're actually on the side of Satan and the Seventh-day Adventists are going to have to take a stand for the Seventh-day Sabbath. So never mind that our nation's in total disarray and moral degradation. Our nation is still attached to righteousness because there isn't a Sunday mandate law yet. That's going to be the real deal breaker, folks. But she says more. So just a few more paragraphs down again, she says, the whole world is to be stirred with enmity against Seventh-day Adventists because they will not yield homage to the papacy by honoring Sunday, the institution of this anti-Christian power. So it's not just going to be nationally, it's gonna be the whole world. Everyone's gonna hate the Seventh-day Adventists, supposedly. These people are going to be front and center. This group that hardly anyone knows anything about, they're gonna be the central figures of the entire planet. So we have some more heaven-sent insight over here in one of her manuscripts from 1899. I'm in Letters and Manuscripts, Volume 14, specifically Manuscript 51. She says, Satan will excite the indignation of apostate Christendom against the humble remnant who conscientiously refuse to accept their customs and traditions. Blinded by the prince of darkness, popular religionists will see only as he sees and feel as he feels. They will determine as he determines and oppress as he is oppressed. Liberty of conscience, which has cost this nation so great a sacrifice, will no longer be respected. The church and the world will unite, and the world will lend to the church her power to crush out the right of the people to worship God according to his word. So eventually, the entire planet, billions of people, are going to be so stirred up by the SDAs not yielding to this Sunday mandate that the world will give all of its power to this papal American 
American government to come for the Seventh-day Adventists. We're going to supposedly be blinded by Satan and see and feel what he does and oppress the Seventh-day Adventists, which as you can guess, they're the remnant. So never mind all the major issues of the day like out of control sex trafficking, degeneracy, child mutilation. No, no, no. The great evil that's going to cause even more outrage than all of that and cause the world to unite will be a shared disdain for Seventh-day Adventists because they won't listen to this papal American hybrid government and stop going to church on Saturdays. So let's jump down just a couple more paragraphs again, like we did last time. And she says, history repeats itself. The same masterful mind that plotted against the faithful in ages past is now at work to gain control of the falling churches that through them, he may condemn and put to death all who will not worship the idol Sabbath. The decree is to go forth that all who will not receive the mark of the beast shall neither buy nor sell, and finally, they shall be put to death. So we the apostates will be the vehicles that Satan is going to use to kill these people. Our churches are a tool for the devil and will essentially be government lackeys and stooges to enforce this Sunday mandate, and if the SDAs don't listen, we will have them killed supposedly. Adventists, do you seriously believe all this? Remember, the president of your church said that all of that was supposedly truthful, accurate, heavenly counsel from the throne room of God, and it's to be trusted and believed in its entirety for all time, even the strong messages about the apocalyptic prophecies, which is what we looked at. And that snippet from Ted was from the 2021 annual council where he was warning your church leaders to be on the lookout for people who diminish the writings of Ellen White or downplay them. So for all the SDAs who keep commenting on my videos saying, I'm an Adventist, but I don't think Ellen White is a must, take it up with your church's president. He was warning, again, your church leaders to be on the lookout for people like you that are watering down the message. But Adventists, I have good news for you. All of this is only a nightmare fan fiction written by a woman and her secretaries in the 19th century. It is not real. No one is coming for you. Most people haven't a clue who you guys are. And even less than that even care that you worship on Saturday. There's not going to be a Sunday worship mandate law. To Protestants and Catholics, your church sounds absolutely nuts. Discernment blog style conspiracy stuff. Just being honest. I understand that many of you will take that as evidence of the evil Protestant attacking you, which ironically will only further reaffirm this doctrinal vortex that you're caught in. But I say this because it shows that you guys don't quite understand the theological divide that exists between Protestants and Catholics. Christians, you need to realize that this is what this church actually believes and teaches its members about you. This is why they're so adamant about getting you to join their church. Even if you already profess to be a Christian, they think you're an apostate who's under the deceptions of Satan. And as you heard Ted Wilson say, they believe that their church has been given a special mission and revelation to take not just to the world, but the Christian world. They think that they are heralding a final warning to come out of the supposed apostate churches, which they call Babylon, and join them or it'll be too late. This is part of their cursed three angels gospel. It's not some secondary issue. With that said, Christians, love on your SDA friends, family, and neighbors. Don't mock them for this. I know that we had a little bit of fun in the review, but it was really to make a point. This sort of hysteria and fear runs rampant in their movement. Trust me, having been there, I've seen it firsthand. Many of them are scared about this impending doom, so share the true Christ and gospel with them. In the process, explain to them that none of us care that they worship on Saturdays and that the United States government is not our friend either. Hello, paging COVID. Whether you're a Protestant or a Catholic, Orthodox, Assyrian Church of the East, Coptic Church. Sorry guys, <laughs> you don't get to get in on the fun. I kid, I kid. But seriously, if anything, the United States government will be an equal opportunity offender and crack down on religious freedoms, and the day that you worship will play zero part in that. So if you liked today's episode, please be so kind as to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you can be notified when content like this is uploaded. As always, I'll catch you around next time. God bless.